Working a VHDL Simulator In this module, you will be able to outline how VHDL Simulator works, describe concept of event-driven verification, define the following concepts, simulation cycle, delta cycle, VHDL simulations is event-driven. Simulation led by events means the process of simulation is only made when there is any event on any signal in the sensitivity list. An event implies a change in the value of any signal. In VHDL, no signal assignment is made immediately, but is scheduled to be updated in some future time. Simulator keeps a clock to keep track of passage of simulation time. The execution phase of VHDL consists of three phases. Initialization phase, followed by repeated execution of signal update and process execution phase until the end of simulation. In initialization phase, the simulation time is set to zero. Each signal is assigned with its initial values declared for the signal or with the default value, if no initial value is declared. Default value depends on the type of the signal, and is assigned with its leftmost value. For example, STD underscore logic is assigned with you. After the objects are initialized, each of the process instances in the design is started and executes the sequential statements in its body. We usually write a model so that at least some of these initial assignments schedule some transactions to get the simulation underway, then suspend by executing a wait statement, which we see later, or by hitting bottom of the process. When all of the process instances have suspended, initialization is complete and the simulator can start the first simulation cycle. In each simulation cycle, triggered processes are executed, and nets are updated. This repeats until end of simulation. In each simulation cycle, nets are updated in the signal update phase and, triggered processes are executed in process execution phase. Simulation time is advanced and next simulation cycle begins. This repeats until end of simulation. Simulation execution is very precisely defined in VHDL to avoid issues with race conditions and non-determinism, which affect other languages. VHDL simulation consists of the repetitive execution of the simulation cycle, during which processes are executed and nets updated. Let us look at simulation cycle in more detail. VHDL simulator maintains two queues. One, to keep track of scheduled transactions on the signal called signal update queue, and two, queue to keep track of the processes awakened by events or timeouts, called process execution queue. The concept is as follows. Each simulation cycle consists of signal update phase followed by process execution phase. First, simulation time is advanced to earliest time at which transaction or process trigger or timeout is scheduled. Signals with new values are updated, which may result in events. Process sensitivity lists is checked to see if any of them is triggered. Triggered processes are placed in process execution queue. When all signals in queue are updated, all processes in process execution queue are executed until they suspend, and signals to be updated due to the process execution are placed in signal update queue. These updates are not made immediately but in some scheduled future time. One cycle is now complete. Simulator time advances and next cycle begins. This repeats until values become stable, i.e., until the signal update and process execution queue becomes empty. Simulation is now complete. Simulation time is advanced to the earliest scheduled next transaction or next process triggered by an event or timeout. If this delay is zero and there is an immediate cycle following the current one in given simulation time, we call such simulation cycle as delta cycle. If there is a delay, Simulation time is advanced by the delay value and the next simulation cycle begins. Note delta cycle consumes simulation cycle but not simulation time. At each point of simulation time there can be multiple delta cycles. When no more signals need updating, and no more processes need executing, then the simulator is free to advance simulation time until the next scheduled activity is found. A scheduled activity may be the assignment of a signal at a future point in time. This is done by attaching an after clause to a signal assignment. The after clause delays the assignment until the simulator has advanced by the required time. After clauses are never used in RTL code as they are non-synthesizable, but are used in behavioral test benches and gate-level timing models. 
A scheduled activity may also be the execution of a process at a future point in time. This is done by executing a wait for X nanosecond statement. The wait for statement suspends the process until the simulator has advanced by the required time. Wait for statements are never used in RTL code, they are non-synthesizable, but are used in behavioral test benches and gate-level timing models. In the graph on the right, we see that, at simulation time 0 nanosecond, there occurs two delta cycles, then simulation time proceeds to 5 nanoseconds, as there is no activity from 0 nanoseconds to 5 nanoseconds, at 5 nanoseconds, 6 delta cycles occurs, and at 18 nanoseconds there is 1 delta cycle. Note that, delta cycles only consume simulation cycles but not simulation time. We need to look at how delta cycles affect the simulation of your model by looking into a code example. We will do this by considering an architecture with three process, P1, P2 and P3. P1 and P2 are both sensitive to signal A, and represents concurrent, parallel logic. P3 is sensitive to signals B and C, which are output from P1 and P2, and represents logic in series with the other two processes. We know that, as the simulation proceeds, your simulator will maintain two lists, signal update list, and, process execution list, the contents of which will change with simulator time. At a particular time in the simulation, the signal update list will contain all signals which have been assigned a value, and are waiting to be updated. The process execution list will contain all processes triggered by a signal event and are waiting to be executed. Let us say that there has been an event scheduled upon signal A, example, A is currently 0 and is assigned to 1 at time, t nanoseconds. A is placed on the signal update list. As there are no process to be executed in the process execution queue at t nanoseconds, simulation time proceeds by delta, which is the next time where an activity is scheduled, and signals in the signal update queue are updated. When the signals are updated, a takes the new value 1. A is in the sensitivity list of processes P1 and P2, so both processes are placed on the process execution list. Hence, in first phase of T plus delta, A equals 1, and process P1 and P2 are in the process execution queue. Since, all signals in the signal update queue are updated, we move to the second phase of the first delta cycle, which is the process execution phase. Processes, P1 and P2 in the process execution queue are executed in random order. We cannot predict the order of execution of the processes, but this should not matter. Process P1 assigns the value 1 to B. This is a new value for B, so the assignment is placed on the signal update list. Process P2 assigns the value 1 to C. This is a new value for C so the assignment is placed on the signal update list. No more processes remain to be executed, so simulation moves on to the signal update phase of the next delta cycle. At T plus 2 delta, signals B and C are updated to 1. Both B and C are in the sensitivity list of process P3. Therefore, P3 is placed on the process execution list. No more signals require updating. So simulation moves to the process execution phase of T plus 2 delta cycle. When P3 executes, the value 1 is assigned to D. This is a new value for D, so the assignment is placed on the signal update list. No more processes require execution, so simulation moves on to the signal update phase of next cycle. At T plus 3 delta, signal D is updated to 1. D is not in the sensitivity list of any process, it is an output from this component. There are no more processes to be executed, and the model is waiting for another change in the input A. Therefore, for a change in A, the model has taken two delta cycles to reach a steady state. Here is summary of the delta cycle activities required by the architecture sim to reach a steady state, after a change of value in the input A. We see from the table that, at t nanoseconds A is assigned to 1, but is updated in t plus 1 delta cycle. A is input for P1 and P2, hence they are placed in process execution queue. After A is updated, P1 
and P2 are executed. These process assign B and C to 1, which is placed in signal update queue. At second delta, B and C are updated with 1, this triggers process P3 and is placed in the execution queue. After B and C are updated, no more pending items in signal update queue, hence process P3 is executed. P3 assigns D to 1 which is put on signal update queue. D is updated to 1 in third delta cycle, since no process is affected by D, process execution queue becomes empty. Since, both the queue become empty and stable values are reached, simulation cycle completes.